At NASA, innovation drives our journey to reach new heights and reveal the unknown, which will benefit all of humanity. That work is part of a vital strategy to equip our nation with the technologies for the future. To inspire a new generation of explorers. To make the next giant leap for humanity. NASA innovation spurs economic growth while continuing U.S. leadership in space and breakthroughs in science and technology. It's such a thrill working for NASA and exploring the universe. NASA's on a journey to Mars. This ambitious goal involves everything that we do. It will transform technology and define our generation. Robotic explorers are paving the way to Mars. We're learning enormous amounts about the surface of Mars daily. In the coming years, another lander and a new rover will discover even more. We're working hard on the solvable challenges of sending humanity to the red planet for the first time. That includes innovation in propulsion, radiation shielding, and landing large payloads. The Orion spacecraft, which will carry astronauts deeper into the solar system than ever before, has achieved a major milestone with its first spaceflight. Soon, it will fly on the most powerful rocket ever built. The Space Launch System, which has moved from concept to development. We're advancing the journey to Mars through progress on the asteroid redirect mission to send people to an asteroid, use what we learn from that, from that mission, and then someday send people to Mars. NASA's mission to an asteroid will test new capabilities in the proving ground of deep space. Our journey to Mars is also unfolding right now aboard the International Space Station. The station facilitates growth in a robust commercial market and low Earth orbit for scientific research, technology development, and for transporting both people and cargo. Together, we're operating experiments off Earth for Earth that are helping us learn how to improve life for humans living both off and on our planet. The station is our outpost on the edge of deep space, where we are advancing human and robotic exploration of farther destinations. American companies are developing systems in which astronauts soon will travel from the United States to low Earth orbit. Commercial partnerships are helping us take the next giant leap by developing new ways of reaching space, creating jobs, and enabling NASA to focus on the cutting edge technologies for future missions. Technology drives exploration. And at NASA, transformative capabilities and cutting edge technologies are being developed, tested, and flown today. Our impressive set of science missions takes us on a journey of discovery to understand our home planet and its sun, search for life beyond, and explore the origins and future of the universe. The most important planet that we study is the one on which we live. As a leader in Earth science, NASA's constantly expanding view of our planet through space is helping us understand our home planet and its changes. Air travel fuels our modern world. And NASA is committed to transforming aviation. We're dramatically reducing air traffic's environmental impact maintaining safety in more crowded skies, and paving the way towards revolutionary aircraft technology. NASA is with you when you fly. And taking you on the journey to Mars. Everything NASA does is improving life on Earth. Raises the bar of human achievement. Making tomorrow's discoveries today. We're America's National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And every day we're helping to reach new heights. Reveal the unknown. And benefit all humanity. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Maria Calora and I'll be your MC today. And I would like to welcome you to the 2015 Administrators Agency Honor Awards Program. This annual awards ceremony is an opportunity for us to come together to honor NASA's best of the best. Before we begin, please rise for the presentation of colors by the Patrick Air Force Base Honor Guard and remain standing during the performance of the national anthem by KSE's very own Amber Allen and Deontay Cooper and special guest Christopher Jackson.
Please be seated. I would like to extend our appreciation to the Patrick Air Force Base Honor Guard and Amber, Deontay, and Christopher for their outstanding performance. Let's please give them a big round of applause. At this time, I'd like to introduce our host and director of Kennedy Space Center, Mr. Bob Cabana. Thanks, Maria. Wasn't it a great opening video? I, I hope all of you are as excited about our path forward for NASA on our journey to Mars as I am. I think it's just absolutely outstanding. You know, we're kind of blessed here at the Kennedy Space Center because on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, we can see actual changes going on. So many folks, you know, it's off somewhere, it's on in design, you know, not everybody gets down to the clean rooms to see what's happening. And, and we, on a daily basis, can look out and see the transformation of Launch Complex 39, supporting commercial operations to low Earth orbit and preparing that launch site for a journey to Mars. You know, just back as in the 60s, this became a moon port. You know, right now, we are putting in place the architecture. This is a Mars port. We're going to Mars from that launch pad right out the window. So uh, I hope all of you get a chance to enjoy your, um, your tour today. And uh, I look forward to talking to you a little bit more over at uh, the Atlantis exhibit about the changes going on here at KSC and about our bright path forward. Uh, my sincere congratulations to all the uh, honorees today. This is absolutely outstanding, and I, I want you to know how much a pleasure it is for me, for KSC, to be able to host uh, this event. It's my pleasure now to introduce uh, NASA's senior career civil servant, our chief operating officer, the, the man responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of NASA and all that we do in all areas, Robert Lightfoot. Thank you, Bob, and hello, everybody. Hello. How y'all doing? Well, when I walked in here, it was awfully quiet. So you guys, this is an award ceremony. We're honoring some great folks here today, so let's get excited about it. It's, it's, a, it's a great great opportunity for us to do something different as an agency, and kudos to our human capital management folks. We normally bring everybody to D.C. When you work for NASA, what a better place to come than Kennedy Space Center to see what we're really doing and how we are press, pressing toward the future. Um, so thanks, Bob, for hosting us. We really appreciate everybody being down here and, and getting to see this. As Bob said, some of the greatest missions this agency has done have blasted off right here, right here at Kennedy Space Center. And you guys are going to get to see that today if you hadn't already seen it. Um, and, and it's just thanks to Bob and his team, they have transformed this into a multi-user spaceport. Right? It, notes about two years ago would say they are transforming KSC into a multi-user uh, uh, spaceport. They have transformed it. And it is impressive to see what they've done to protect our future and, and get us ready to take on this next challenge of going to Mars. So it's pretty, pretty impressive, and you guys will get to see that. Every year is dynamic in this agency. It's a pretty exciting time. We get to do neat things, and, and uh, right now we are thriving. We are busy. And if you just, all you got to do is you guys drive around today, look at all the construction. It reminds me of the pictures I saw back before Apollo. You'll see things under construction all over the place, right in the middle of active systems, active launch pads, uh, and still a lot of building going on. And so that's what the team's doing. If you think this past year what we've done, we flew Orion. You saw the, you saw the, the video here, uh, EFT-1. What a big step for us to, to get that, that capsule up and get it moving. And then to get it home, you know, my favorite, favorite quote was on NASA Watch where it said somebody needs to spill some coffee on the keyboard over there. Everything's going pretty well for NASA on this mission. And it did. The teams, the teams went right down the middle, and now we're taking that thing apart in excruciating detail to, to let it teach us, let it, let it teach us what we need to do. I remember going into that, into that review, uh, before we were ready to go fly, one of, the, one of the engineers said, you know, we can, we can work on it a little more. We can do a little more work, but the hardware wants to talk to us. Let's let it talk to us. And that's what we do at NASA. We, we really need to get our hardware out there, and that's where our engineers prove their, prove their metal. A little later, this, this, this year we're going to have SpaceX launch again, uh, their seventh mission to station, uh, a great partner that's become with us in terms of providing the cargo to the International Space Station. Again, they're taking up the docking adapters that are going to allow us to bring the, co the commercial crew uh, capsules up, hopefully in around the 2017 time frame. So, again, we will have astronauts flying out of Florida, out of United, off of U.S. soil, in 2017. So it's pretty exciting for us to see what we're doing. Then you look at the International Space Station, and you saw Scott Kelly there. That was when he was at home on the ground, uh, his new home. He's been up there about a, a little over a month now. Uh, Scott's in the middle of a one-year mission on the International Space Station. We normally just have six-month uh, increments for our crews, but but we're studying. 
what, um, what, what the effects of a year. What, what is the tipping point? We've had folks up there for six months. Does something happen after six months? And of course, his, his twin brother, Mark, here is on, on the ground, is also an astronaut, or what, is a former astronaut, and he's part of the same experiment. Can we, what are we gonna learn about people after a year? Does something change different? We need to know that as we, as we continue this journey to Mars. So it's pretty exciting. In the meantime, we got to develop a lot of technologies, right? That's what we, that's probably what we're best at in this agency is getting these technologies ready to go. If we're gonna go to Mars and we're gonna land at Mars, we've landed Curiosity there, which is like the size of a Mini Cooper. Um, now we wanna take crews and a habitat and a potential lander to Mars. Well, it's a little bit more difficult to come through their atmosphere than it is ours because theirs is thinner and got to slow down. And so we're just today and roughly about an hour and 15 minutes, we open a window in Hawaii for us to test what's called the low density supersonic decelerator. It's a fancy way of saying a, a, bit, a process to slow us down when we get to Mars. That's a huge materials challenge. It's a huge challenge in so many areas, but the technology team here at NASA is working it and we'll go, we'll go fly that. We, we call it our big uh, flying saucer because it expands and it, it'll use the atmosphere to slow down. It's, it's, it's a fascinating, fascinating concept. That with other concepts will be what we use ultimately to take crews to Mars. So that's happening hopefully today. If the weather participates with us, the teams are ready to go. So as you heard, you know, and you've heard and you're going to hear from Charlie, I'm sure when he gets up in a minute, we're on a journey to Mars, but we're already there, right? We have, we have rovers on Mars as we speak doing the precursor missions that we need to help us learn about, about the red planet before we take folks there. And it's exciting. We got, we're, we're, we're going there in a way that, that lets us, lets us learn all the things we need to do before we take folks. But, but we can't go to Mars right now. We've got things we got to do. We've got a stepping stone approach that we're taking as an agency. And I think the point is we're going to learn about the way we, we're going to do decelerate, decelerators that are going to get us to land on Mars. We're also going to learn about propulsion systems in space. We have an electric propulsion program that we're going to use for the asteroid redirect mission that will help us. All these things are going to help us. They're just, we just build off those and ultimately we will get to Mars. But not everything we do is related to Mars, right? It's not all just Mars. We do a lot of things here propelling us to breakthroughs right here on Earth. Whether it's our aeronautics program, you've heard, you know, NASA's with you when you fly. For those of you that, how many of you flew down here to, to KSC? All right, so I did this morning and I get a kick out of it now as I sit in the airplanes and I notice all the things that NASA had something to do with, right? And when I sit on that tarmac and wait and wait and wait, and I know the systems we're working on to help with our partner in the FAA to make that wait less time, right? Those are the kind of things that we're working on. And then the air traffic safety, the spacing of the planes and the things that the systems that we roll out um, as an agency to, to help make it, you know, the aircraft safer, more fuel efficient, and of course, more, more efficient in general for the program. So that's all part of the energy and the spirit of NASA. Think about it from the science side. We talk about Mars, but think about what we're doing. On on mark your calendars for July 14th. July 14th, the spacecraft called New Horizon launched nine years ago. will pass Pluto and give us the first images, the best images we've ever had of, of the, the, I call it the planet, because when I was in, when I was in school, it's a planet, right? So you can, we'll, we'll see after we go there. But uh, when we go by Pluto, we'll get, we'll get an incredible view the, the spacecraft Dawn, which seems to have been up there forever, is now uh, with the dwarf planet Ceres, and we're getting some of the best photographs back we've ever seen of that dwarf planet. It's just amazing. Com again, continuing to rewrite textbooks, continuing to improve our understanding of the universe around us, and, and including our own so solar system. We just selected the instruments for our, our mission to Jupiter's moon Europa, um, a fascinating set of instruments that's going to help us understand about the ice, ice shelf we know is there, What's happening around that planet? Could it, ha could it actually have life there uh, underneath that ice shelf? And that's, the, that's where the team's going to go look. So while Curiosity is on the surface of Mars, we're going and looking at the other planets as well. Steady progress continues on the James Webb Space Telescope. You saw one of the mirrors in the video there. Um, this, we launched in 2018. The team has been on the path for the last four years, still has plenty of margin to that date, and is making great progress. This is the next great explorator, explore, exploratory that, the, that, that NASA will develop, or has developed and will put in space. So as we celebrate Hubble's 25th anniversary here a couple months ago, we're also still working on that next generation, the, the James Webb Space Telescope, and it's gonna bring back, it's gonna bring back tremendous images once we get that thing on orbit. And it's, it's again, very exciting what we're, what we're doing. So it's kind of a, a, I like to say a breathtaking portfolio that we have, right? And as, as Bob said, as the CEO, I kind of get to see this every month. I get to see what, we talk, what we're doing and what we're working on. And it's amazing that we have all this that we're doing, right? That's kind of the what we're doing. But, but let's talk about how we do it, right? How we do it is with you. It's our people. 
It's, it's, you know, we, we can talk what all day long, but how we do it is in the, in the spirit of the NASA team. That's what makes this place go. And it's not just the folks that work here. It's the family members that support them. So do me a favor. If you're a family member and you're here supporting one of our honorees, would you please stand up? I, I would say for the most, thank you very much for your support, but I would say for the most part, those of us that get to do this, we do this because we love it, right? And it's, it's, it's as much a hobby as it is a job for us, and you guys have to put up with us, those of you that just stood up. And, but I appreciate the support. I appreciate, the, as, as we used to say, picking up at the soccer game, the, the covering the PTA meetings while we get to go do what we get to do. So for all of you, thank you very much for being part of this family as well. It's, it's, it's that energy in our people and the folks that support them that allow us to go get to do the things that we get to do and make the differences that we, that we want to do. Because what we, we, what we do really does matter, whether it's a spinoff of a technology that, that supports us here on Earth or whether it just makes things safer, more efficient for us as, as we move forward or just expands our knowledge, right? That's what we do. And this is one place where I think for the United States, NASA remains a global leader. The U.S. can look at us as, the, and this is a place where we can say we're a leader internationally in space, and that's what we do. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing what we do. It's an incredible investment for the nation. I think people are attracted to what we do for a lot of reasons. We inspire, right? We, we push the boundaries of knowledge. We, we, and that gives people a little bit of hope and a little bit of, fat, a little bit of, of, of thinking that maybe, you know, we can overcome some of the things that we, that we have to deal with because we are making great advances in areas that people, people never thought were possible. Charlie likes to say we make the impossible possible, right? That's what we get to do every day at NASA and it's pretty, pretty fascinating. I think I wanna hit one more, one more thing. I talked about the what, I'm gonna talk about the how, and now I'm gonna talk about the why. And I think the why is really important. You know, we're gonna recognize some of the best this agency has today. They're gonna walk up here and I want you to listen to what, they, what they've done. Um, and if you, and, or, or read, the, read the book. It's pretty phenomenal what these folks have accomplished. And they represent a very small percentage of this entire agency. Um, but it's pretty impressive. But, but what I would say is they all understand the why. They're here because they get the why. Why do we do this? And, and it's easy to, you know, I think if you think about it, every one of them, every one of them, if you brought them out and you get a chance to talk to them in the reception, they all have a story to tell. They'll tell their story about why they're doing what they're doing and what they get to do on a, on a daily basis. They're either involved in taking humans further than they've ever gone before in space, building systems that are gonna reveal new scientific knowledge to us, basically rewriting textbooks for grandkids, assuming my kid, grandkids actually have textbooks by the time they get there, they probably won't, <laughs> and doing things that may help us understand our home planet, whether it's through our Earth science program or through aeronautics that allows us to travel more efficiently and more safely. Every one of them has a story to tell. And most of us are building off a legacy that was left to us that were here, the folks that were here before. And I always talk to the folks that were here before. I, I ask, you know, especially the guys back in the Apollo days, I say, you know, did you know you were making history? And for the most part, what they say is, no, I was just doing my job. And man, I love my job. It was fun. And I bet you ask all these folks here, they'll say, I was just doing my job. I love doing this stuff. But they're also making history every day. You saw that video. And that's what, we're, that's what we do in this agency. We're, 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 as Charlie says, we're a future agency, but we're making a lot of history as we move forward. So I've shared a story a couple times here lately about the why part of this, and I, and I wanna share it again for this crowd because I think it's important at an honor awards because I do believe you guys represent that part, the why part, as much as anybody. It's the stonecutter story. Most of you have probably heard it before, but it never hurts to hear it again to describe the why. A man sees three stone stonecutters stone working in a quarry. He wants to find out what they're working on. So he walks up to the first and says, what are you doing? He says, well, I, I'm, I'm making a brick. Well, that didn't help him very much. So he goes to the second one. He says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm making a brick, that I'm, but I'm making sure the edges are just perfectly shaped so that when it gets placed, it'll, it'll be the right, the right part. The third says, I'm building a cathedral. Which one gets it? The third one, right? Now apply that to us. I'm an old rocket guy, so I had to make it a rocket story. So our version of the story could be, you walk up to an engineer that's on an additive manufacturing machine, right? First engineer says, I'm building a part, right? The second engineer says, I'm building a part that, that's gonna fit on a rocket. The third engineer says, I'm building a rocket that's gonna take humans further than we've ever taken them before. 
That's what we do. That's the why, and that's what's important. So thanks again to each of you for what you've done for, my, for, for our honorees today, and thanks especially to the families for, for being here with us and, and supporting these folks and allowing us to get to go do what we get to do. Generations like these behind you are gonna follow in your footsteps, and so you can be proud of that accomplishment. So thank you all for having us here at KSC today, and now I'd like to turn the floor over to the leader of our nation's space program, Charlie Bolden, our administrator. Thanks very much, Robert, and, and thanks to everybody for coming out today. Bob, Robert, I want to thank both of you for your comments. You know, uh, Robert alluded to a lot of different things. I, I, as I looked out there, I saw some of the spouses, I think, and family members who kind of looked like they were getting a little choked up when Robert thanked you. Um, I can see one over there, because she's like me. Um, you all do incredible stuff. You really do. And I think that's the message that Robert was trying to give you. Um, I am privileged, to be quite honest. I, I work with the greatest group of people in the world. You know, there's um, about 18,000 civil servants that make up the NASA family and about 40,000 contractors. And like Robert and Bob said, we get to see a lot of stuff come and go every single day. Uh, but from NASA headquarters, while we're not down touching hardware every day, we get to see the impact that you all make. Uh, and we get to see it on a global scale because we do uh, get to talk to people from other countries and, and, uh, and companies and the like who always admire everything that you do. So this is a very, this is your day, those who are being recognized today. You know, I, um, Robert gives me something every time I hear him that, that I fall in love with, and it's, I, I never heard the hardware wants to talk to us. Uh, that is something we need to remember. And we were having a discussion about schedules and all that kind of stuff before we came in. And, it, it, you know, we can work a thing to death. But every once in a while, we need to say, okay, it's time to go and, and let the hardware talk to us. So I'll, I'll try to remember that. I, I was commenting to Robert in the video. I'm not sure how many of you saw it when the, the pilot, the guy wearing the flight suit, says NASA is, NASA is with you when you fly. I try to say that all the time. It just doesn't go over well when you're in a business suit. You know, I really liked it. When, when you got this guy in his flight suit who was saying NASA is with you when you fly, it looks like somebody who really knows what he's talking about. So I, I appreciated that. Why KSC? Why, why are we here today? Um, you know, it's because our really sharp people in human capital decided that we should take this show on the road, that, that bringing people to Washington is okay, uh, but people in the centers and their families don't always have an opportunity to see the significance of this particular ceremony. This is, we're recognizing the highest performers in the agency today with two awards that are the highest awards we give, one for civil servants and the other one for people in the public service. So those of you who are being recognized, this hopefully is a very special day for you and your families, but also it gives us an opportunity to allow you to share this uh, with people who might not ordinarily get to see it up close and personal. And we're really gonna try to work from here and, and kind of move around the center uh, periodically so that we do this ceremony at centers instead of just always at NASA headquarters. You know, I said I, I really, uh, I wanna thank also uh, every single one of you who has joined us today for this because it is, it is a special celebration. I know many of you uh, have traveled to be here and I, wanna, I want you to know how proud I am of the work that you do. Uh, to your families, as Robert said, I say thanks for sharing your loved ones with us. Uh, we recognize the fact that, that you have sacrificed and uh, you'd like to have them home uh, much more than they are, some of you. Uh, you know, for the wives that are like my wife, uh, you know, I remember when I tried to retire the first time, or transition as she calls it, uh, I got up du du dutifully every morning and I went down and I fixed coffee and would bring up breakfast in bed and first week, uh, you know, I would give her the breakfast and the coffee and I'd say, what are we doing today? And she would kind of look, and then start of the second week, I brought the coffee and breakfast up. I said, Jackie, what are we doing today? She said, look, I don't know what you're doing. I got a life. Uh, you don't have to go back to work, but you got to get out of here and do something. <laughs> she said, I really appreciate everything. So I, I really do appreciate what you all do for us all the time, and I, and I know that your loved ones do also. But, but thanks so much for sharing your loved ones with us. I appreciate that so many of the honorees' family members have joined us, and I also want to welcome a very special group. Uh, I had a chance to just kind of yell at them on my way past, but it's welcome the students from the Cocoa Beach Boys and Girls Club 
who have joined us today. And there, I know many of them are on a row back there. They're in the, in the purple and yellow, great colors, by the way, for uh, not sure who picked your colors, but you couldn't have picked better colors uh, than purple and gold. Some of you get it, uh, some others don't. Uh, Alexander, Oliver, Aiden, Benjamin, Madison, Leah, Nicholas, Alec. Uh, let me see, are you Alec? Oh, that's Alec, you must be Nicholas. Yeah, Nicholas, I, I was telling folks on the front row, I said, Nicholas is probably going, who is that guy? <laughs> who keeps turning around, before we started, who keeps turning around and bothering me and talking about not drinking coffee because it'll stunt your growth and all other kinds of stuff. <laughs> Nicholas, I was just trying to, you know, I was trying to thank you for, for, uh, for, for you, what your, your dad's gonna get today and hopefully help you understand how important it is and, and how hopefully you will feel very proud about this. You'll look back on it someday and you'll say, I do remember that guy now, I thought he was, thought he was crazy. I don't know what he was doing. Um, you know, for the group though from the Boys and Girls Club, I, I'll single out Tamara. Tamara, raise your hand for a second. Or in fact, Stan, you are the oldest one. She told me that. Stand up for a second. I, I, I kind of, as I was looking through this, uh, everybody says Tamara's always full of life and her smile is always shining like, one, like the one in her picture. Uh, she's the reigning youth of the year for Cocoa Beach. She's a star volleyball, you will love this, Dr. Rowe. She's a star volleyball and basketball player at Titusville High and she's a star track runner at the school too. So uh, Tamara kind of represents all of the kids out there. Thanks very much, Tamara, and congratulations to you and to everybody else who's here. I, I said all that, though, about the students, about the families, and there, there are more families here with their kids, and, and it's special for all of you to be here, but I want you to know that you are really the first, the, the true first space generation. It's your generation that has never, Tamara has, two years. You, you miss it by two years, but you're still in the space generation. Your generation has never known a time that human beings have not lived and worked in space. For every single one of you that's 14 years old or younger, soon uh, the 15 year olds, there will not be a single second in your life when human beings have not continuously been living and working on the International Space Station, 250 miles above Earth. And uh, as, as Robert said, we're not all about Mars, we're not all about the International Space Station, but we're about making life better down here on Earth. And that's what's going on on the International Space Station. And for the vast majority of you, uh, young people in the audience, that's what makes you the special space generation. You're the ones who are actually gonna go to Mars. We talk about it. Uh, Bob and I, we, we keep scheming, thinking that we're gonna last long enough. Uh, you know, we talk to Senator John Glenn now and then who went to space at the age of 77. And so he tells us we can't go back and fly again until we're 77. And Bob and I are starting to count the days, really years, because it's a long time to get to 77 even when you're as old as I am. Uh, but you are going to Mars. Uh, probably one of you sitting in the audience right now will be among the first crew that's actually gonna put boots on Mars, and that's really important, and that's why the people being recognized today, I think if you ask them, a lot of them would tell you that's also why they do what they do. When Robert talks about the how, the why, the what, uh, you know, we're doing it for you. We're doing a lot of hard work today to make it possible. Uh, new technologies, like Robert mentioned, the solar electric propulsion and the Orion crew module and space launch rocket, launch system rocket are being developed and tested right now. But people your age are going to be the ones who take humanity to Mars in the 2030s. All of the people here today, both those who are going to be up here sharing the stage with us and those out there in the audience are gonna help you, gonna help you realize your dreams. These people are all about the future, about your future. The NASA workforce is an extraordinary group of, possessed, of people who possess many talents and are dedicated to making the, pos the impossible possible and turning science fiction into science fact. Each year it's my privilege to celebrate its accomplishments through our honor awards, awards ceremony. At this ceremony today, we present the highest honors NASA bestows on our workforce, the Distinguished Service Medal and the Distinguished Public Service Medal. That very word, distinguished, means they've set themselves apart. They've broken from the crowd into a loftier realm of quality and dedication, distinguished. That's the kind of people we need, that the nation needs on NASA's team as we make the journey to Mars because it's not gonna be easy. 
We're going to need everyone to pull their own weight, and we're going to need leaders like our honor awards recipients to see the big picture and make a targeted investment in their intellectual capital and good old-fashioned blood, sweat, and tears. Our goal today is to celebrate the excellence of the honorees with a thoughtful and meaningful recognition and to celebrate all of NASA and the grand challenges our agency meets, which give rise to such passion and talent. This ceremony is also intended to inspire and engage all of you present. Inspiration is one of the critical gifts we give each other at the, and, the NASA, and that NASA gives to the future generations that make their own giant leaps in exploration. I want to thank our entire workforce for another fantastic year. We reached a lot of milestones, as Robert mentioned. Our journey to Mars continues unabated, even as we celebrate the incredible legacy we have already built. That legacy includes such achievements as the 25th anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope and the 50th anniversary of the first American spacewalk by Ed White, which, by the way, is actually tomorrow. You know, this past weekend here at the KSC Visitor Center, it was my privilege, Bob and I were both honored and privileged to take part in the groundbreaking of the new Heroes and Legends exhibit that will honor the pantheon of our spaceflight pioneers from the earliest days of NASA to contemporary times. And I invite all of you to come back uh, in the, what is it, Bob, the fall of 2016 or the summer of 2016 uh, when, when, when Heroes and Legends has its official opening. I also participated in the induction of four new members of the Astronaut Hall of Fame, John Grunsfeld, Steve Lindsay, Kent Rominger, and Ray Seddon. I want all of you to, to recognize that you, you, every single one of you who is in the NASA family sitting here is a part of that continuum. We are all standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before, and we're providing through our own efforts and labors today the foundation for those who will follow, the young men and women sitting here in this audience, the young men and women from the Boys and Girls Club, the sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters of the honorees today. That's something of which we can all be extremely proud. You only get a strong foundation by building it with care and pride and using the very best materials. So thanks to all of you for providing that in the form of your dedication and your excellence. Our team is unbeatable, and I'm delighted to lead this incredible workforce toward, toward the next milestones. So now, please join me in recognizing our colleagues who have done exceptional work this past year and in celebrating the incredible missions that each and every one of us is helping unfold today. Now, I'd like to bring uh, NASA's Associate Administrator, our Chief Operating Officer, Robert Lightfoot, back up to this, as we call it, the stage to join me so we can give away some awards. Ladies and gentlemen, each year, NASA recognizes individuals who have made a profound impact to NASA's mission success. These individuals have been selected to receive one of two prestigious awards. First is the Distinguished Service Medal. This is NASA's highest form of recognition that is awarded to a government employee who, by distinguished service, ability, or vision, has personally contributed to NASA's advancement of United States interests. The individual's achievement or contribution must demonstrate a level of excellence that has made a profound or indelible impact on NASA mission success, and therefore, the contribution is so extraordinary that other forms of recognition by NASA would be inadequate. Today, we have 21 honoree in this category. Our first honoree is Mr. Daniel Bufton. Dan is a true force of nature. Um, he is a collaborative spirit. He is a uh, person that genuinely cares about the people that he works with. Um, he is a mentor. He is, um, has a strategic view of the world and has a way of assembling teams to do sometimes impossible projects. Um, he has done too many projects here at Ames to count uh, from facilities to space related things, um, but through it all, his strengths are his people skills, his ability to empower the people that he works with, to 
inspire them to do things beyond what they think they're capable of doing. Uh, that really is the essence of Dan. Mr. Bufton. Mr. Bufton is being honored for distinguished service to NASA that has created critical facility capabilities, performed impactful science, and inspired future project managers at Ames. Our next honoree is Mr. Leroy Kane. Hello, Leroy. Glad to be able to be here and talk with you and to your colleagues at Kennedy Space Center about your Distinguished Service Medal. Uh, it was exciting to be able to be there and see Robert award that to you. Uh, when I think about the Distinguished Service Medal and what it represents, uh, you're one of the people that come to mind. Your work with the Space Shuttle Program, uh, saving it from lightning strikes and moving it out of the way of hurricanes, uh, running mission management teams and solving technical problems uh, are really what allowed the space station to be assembled, uh, Hubble to be serviced, uh, and the program to proceed and continue to fly after Columbia and then fly effectively and safely even while the program was being planned for uh, completion and shutdown. You kept it going, you kept your teams going, you trained a lot of people who are now leaders elsewhere across NASA. And so uh, Distinguished Service Medal uh, really says it all, Leroy. You're a, uh, a valuable asset to this agency and we're looking forward to working with you even in your new role. Mr. Kane. <laughs> Mr. Kane is being honored for outstanding contributions to the nation's human spaceflight endeavors through a stellar career in NASA's Space Shuttle, International Space Station, and Exploration Systems Development Programs. Our next honoree is Dr. Raymond Clinton, Jr. Dr. Clinton is absolutely a pioneer in the area of advanced manufacturing and additive construction. He has personally uh, led that field and area, and at one time, when we had really nothing to show in that arena, took uh, an idea of printing a part in space on a 3D printer and took it from an SBIR program to fruition where we printed a part on the International Space Station this past year. It's an amazing accomplishment. He also worked closely with the Army on a concept to build structures on another uh, planetary body, and we're doing that in cooperation with the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Another example of where he took something that really wasn't um, going anywhere and has turned it into a, a major activity and partnership with another organization. Dr. Clinton. <laughs> Dr. Clinton is being honored for sustained exemplary service and leadership of almost 30 years contributing to NASA's scientific understanding of the Earth and the universe in which we live. Our next honoree is Mr. Daniel Dumbacher. Dan Dumbacher's 36 year career has uh, demonstrated excellence. His, uh, his ability to lead and, and provide guidance in complex systems development efforts is, uh, is, is very noteworthy. Most recently as the Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, he has led the uh, Exploration Systems portfolio in developing the foundational capabilities for our journey to Mars. Uh, Dan was also uh, the engineering director at Marshall Space Flight Center and uh, the deputy uh, director for the safety and mission assurance. He was on numerous other, uh, other programs as either the manager or uh, the deputy, things like X-33, X-37. Dan clearly earned 
NASA's Distinguished Service Medal. Mr. Dumbacher, who could not be with us today, is being honored for distinguished service and exemplary leadership in engineering and management that is crucial to the success of human exploration and pioneering of our solar system. Our next honoree is Mr. Charles Gay. I want to congratulate Chuck Gay. Chuck has been a tremendous contributor to all of what we do at NASA, but especially in the Science Mission Directorate. A little bit of Chuck is exploring the universe, exploring the solar system, the sun and the earth with all of the wonderful missions he's contributed to. Congratulations, Chuck, and thank you very much for your service. Mr. Gay, who also could not be with us today, is being honored for outstanding achievement and, and distinguished service to NASA and the nation in the leadership of space and earth science missions and for dedication to teaching the ne next generation of leaders so that they too may someday become great leaders. Our next honoree is Mr. Mark Geyer. Mark Geyer is a very talented leader who's made extraordinary contributions to human spaceflight throughout his career. Since 2007, he's been the Orion Program Manager, leading the development of Orion through the hugely successful Exploration Flight Test 1 last December, and continuing still toward the joint Orion SLS EM-1 mission in a few years. One of Mark's greatest leadership attributes is his ability to attract and inspire the best and brightest people, even during times of challenge and uncertainty. His thoughtful and steady hand is an inspiration to everyone who works with him. Mr. Gar, who could not be with us today, is being honored for exemplary leadership an extraordinary personal dedication to NASA's mission as demonstrated by the Orion Program successful Exploration Flight Test 1. Our next honoree is Mr. William Hayden. Uh, Dr. Hayden has made uh, numerous contributions to many NASA programs. He's been a, a huge contributor in the field of instrument systems and has worked on everything from uh, the Cassini Sears program all the way through the James Webb Space Telescope, including Earth and Space Science Instruments. Dr. Hayden is one of those unique individuals who has both the integrity and the technical brilliance to understand many different uh, disciplines, uh, has, is able to see the big picture, is able to lead large teams uh, on very complex systems, and has accomplished just a huge amount on many different NASA programs over a very long and uh, very incredible career. Dr. Hayden. <laughs> Dr. Hayden is being honored for more than 35 years of service to NASA, conquering intricate and complex technological challenges to advance the agency's science goals. Our next honoree is Mr. Paul Hill. Paul Hill has been a leader of change throughout his career and particularly as director of JSC's Mission Operations Directorate, MOD. In this role, he successfully transformed the training and flight control model, leading to quicker certifications for mission control personnel. Paul played a key role in the Columbia Accident Investigation and was chosen as lead flight director for the Return to Flight mission, STS-114. Under his leadership, MOD has brilliantly addressed innumerable operational issues and challenges, protecting crew and vehicle health and allowing the International Space Station to be assembled and then utilized in support of science, technology, and exploration. He embodies the attributes that MOD values, tough and competent. 
Mr. Hill, who could not be with us today, is being honored for distinguished service and directing mission operations support to NASA spaceflight missions. Our next honoree is Dr. Arthur Howe. Dr. Arthur Howe truly made GPM global by developing a worldwide science team. His death in November 2013 was just three months prior to launch. His presence, leadership, and generous personality, as well as the example he set, are greatly missed. Scientists all over the world remember Dr. Howe through his successful GPM mission and their use of the data for science and society. He insisted that GPM add additional instrument capabilities so that we're able to measure light rain rates to heavy rain rates and falling snow. He also insisted that that data be provided in near real time so that society can better understand water resources, hurricanes, floods, and landslides. Mrs. Sandra Howe will be accepting this honor on behalf of her late husband. <laughs> Dr. Howe is being honored for distinguished service and steadfast leadership in establishing the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission as a successful international project for scientific and societal benefit. <laughs> Our next honoree is Mr. Thomas Irvine. Mr. Irvine certainly deserves to receive the agency's highest honor. Tom has made outstanding contributions to the agency and the nation through his distinguished NASA career in the International Space Station Program, Facility Management, and most recently as Deputy Associate Administrator in Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate. Congratulations and thank you for everything you have done, Tom. Well done. Mr. Irvine, who could not be with us today, is being honored for his outstanding service to NASA and the nation through his leadership in aeronautics facility management, and the space station. Our next honoree is Dr. Gary Jans. I'm happy today to have the opportunity to talk about Gary Jans and the wonderful work he's been doing for NASA for the last 30 years. However, I only had the opportunity to work with him for the last eight years, where he was the head of the SBIR STTR program. He is able to work challenges uh, that span the entire agency uh, with great integrity and civility and inspirational to those around him who, who worked uh, with him to, to overcome the many challenges that the program presented. Uh, I'm really happy to have had the opportunity to uh, have learned from him. He's a great mentor and I'm glad that he's being recognized for this great uh, honor today. Dr. Jans, who could not be with us today, is being honored for distinguished service over a lifetime of outstanding service and taking personal initiative to enable groundbreaking NASA missions and programs. <laughs> Our next honoree is Mr. Carl Preston Jones. I'm Chris Singer, the Engineering Director at Marshall Space Flight Center. I've known Preston Jones for over 30 years. As wide-eyed young engineers on the space shuttle program, we worked closely together doing SSME analysis. And while his technical skills are tremendous, it is his leadership skills that distinguish him among NASA. He has the unique ability to listen without the re desire to respond immediately. So he is truly understanding. It is that skill and his ability to humbly ask difficult questions that make him unique and people want to talk to him. He has been a tremendous asset to the nation's space program and will continue to help set the environment and the tone for the development of Space Launch System. It is an honor to work with him and I'm blessed to call him my friend. Mr. Jones. <laughs> 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 
Mr. Jones is being honored for extraordinary and distinguished leadership service in the development of NASA's human spaceflight missions and programs. Our next honoree is Mr. Richard Keegan, Jr. Hi, it's my distinct honor and privilege, uh, actually a pleasure for me to have nominated Rick Keegan for the NASA Distinguished Service Award. Uh, he has been an absolutely incredible asset to the agency throughout his incredible career, uh, but most notably uh, recently when he served the dual capacity as the Assistant Deputy Administrator and the Associate Administrator for the Mission Support Directorate. But I think uh, what we're all most proud about, and I think that Rick will probably cherish, I know he, he has left his mark, on his mentorship and his leadership with our three career uh, leadership development programs, uh, those being FIRST, MLLP, and SES CDP. Uh, he was also a, a prime mover in the establishment of our pilot program for supervisors called LASER. So Rick, it's my pleasure uh, to have nominated you for this great award. M Mr. Keegan, who could not be with us today, is being honored for a career of outstanding leadership distinguished service, and contributions in support of the nation's space program and NASA's mission. Our next honoree is Dr. William Coe. Dr. William Coe is deserving of the NASA's Distinguished Service Medal due to his lifetime of work. Nearly 40 years with the agency, he has been a lead in the computational and analytical work in solid mechanics. The successes of his work have led to NASA's success in space shuttle flight, uh, space flight, uh, atmospheric and aeronautical flight. His work has been greatly influential in the automotive and industrial areas as well for the, for the country. So Dr. William Coe is very disturbing of the NASA Distinguished Service Medal. Dr. Coe, who could not be with us today, is being honored for a diverse and sustained distinguished engineering achievement as a senior structural mechanics researcher. Our next honoree is Ms. Amanda Miskavich. Amanda's getting the Distinguished Service Medal, I believe, because LSP is now seen as the leader in commercial launch services. Under Amanda's guidance, LSP is now recognized as the leader in commercial launch services for the agency. So not only does every science and robotic mission benefit from the expertise in launch services program, but now commercial crew, commercial resupply to the station all benefit since we're flying similar uh, commercial launch vehicles. We also provided advisory services to uh, EFT-1. So that's a big swath across the agency. Um, and it, it's really through her leadership that this program has grown and she's developed these uh, excellent partnerships. Ms. Mitskevich. <laughs> Amanda is being honored for distinguished and exemplary service in establishing the launch services program as the leader in commercial launch services for the agency. Our next honoree is Mr. Samuel Placanica. Sam Placanica started at Goddard over 36 years ago as a co-op employee, and in that time he's become one of our most valuable satellite doctors. There's not a mission that's, that's come through Goddard that Sam hasn't had some positive impact on, either through leading them or through participating in them or through a review capacity. And once the satellites are on orbit, um, if anything goes wrong with them, he's one of the first people we call in order to try to figure out how to fix them. Um, over the years since Sam has been here, there have been probably 30, 40, 50, many more engineers that have come through our group. And I think through his positive example to other employees and his mentorship, Sam has really um, improved the branch just through his very presence. Mr. Pukanica. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Placanica is being honored for a long and successful career enabling NASA missions as an attitude control system analyst, lead engineer, and satellite doctor. <laughs> Our next honoree is Dr. Elizabeth Robinson. Hi, it's my privilege today to, uh, to nominate Dr. Beth Robinson for the NASA Distinguished Service Medal. And um, I had the privilege of working with Beth during her, her entire tenure here as the NASA Chief Financial Officer. She was very instrumental in getting us through a very difficult time, a period uh, of, of sequestration and even a government shutdown. But most notably, uh, I credit her with being the chief person responsible for NASA getting a clean audit for the first time since 2002 when we got it in, in 2010. But most importantly, when we got the gold standard, uh, an unqualified audit in 2011. Uh, so Beth, uh, this is a tribute to you. This is highly deserved and uh, it was my pleasure to nominate you for this award. Dr. Robinson, who could not be with us today, is being honored for extraordinary contributions, distinguished service, and outstanding leadership in support of the nation's space agency and NASA's mission. Our next honoree is Dr. Kevin Shepard. Kevin is a nationally recognized uh, expert in uh, aircraft. Uh, space launch systems and also wind turbine acoustics and he is highly deserving of the NASA Distinguished Service Medal. He sustained uh, discipline expertise, uh, lasting contributions and impactful solutions to the toughest problems in acoustics and his service to the acoustics community at large over the past 35 years significantly improved the quality of life for the American public. The impact of his qualifications and uh, contributions are exemplified by his enduring membership on the Federal Agency Committee for Aircraft Acoustics. Dr. Shepard. <laughs> Dr. Shepard is being honored for sustained excellence and outstanding contribution to the agency's acoustic programs. Our next honoree is Mr. Scott Wilson. Scott Wilson had a really unique role in the Exploration Flight Test One mission. He worked for both the GSDO program and the Orion program, and he was responsible for the production and the manufacturing of the spacecraft, which went across multiple centers, Glenn, Michou, Johnson, and Kennedy, and he was also responsible for the servicing and the ultimate recovery of the spacecraft. And with any flight test development program, there are a number of challenges. And Scott really kept his team focused. And I think the launch in December, which re-energized our agency and the nation, his leadership was directly a big contribution to that. So it's with a lot of pride that we joined with the Orion Program Management Team to nominate Scott for this prestigious award. And we look forward to celebrating with his family and friends when he receives the Distinguished Service Medal. And so we want to thank Scott for everything he does, and he couldn't deserve this more. Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Mr. Wilson is being honored for continued distinguished service over several years, providing outstanding production operations management for the success of the Exploration Flight Test One launch. Our next honoree is Dr. William Winfrey. Dr. Winfrey, Bill Winfrey's deserving because he's extremely talented, he's dedicated, and he's shown leadership in the area of non-destructive evaluation to ensure integrity of aircraft and spacecraft. He's demonstrated this several times during his career. When the um, American Airlines crash due to tail assembly failure over Long Beach years ago, he led a team of scientists to confirm that it wasn't the composite structures which were new at the time that caused that problem, 
When the Columbia Accident Investigation Board solicited scientists, Bill was solicited and he dedicated six months of 60 to 70 hour weeks deployed from his family to Kennedy to help confirm root causes of what caused the leading edge disintegration and to develop new scientific techniques to inspect foam and to prevent um, further damage to the shuttle leading edge. Bill's also been a branch lead to lead scientists and develop new people to follow in his footsteps, and he's a wonderful person to work with, so it's a, it's a pleasure to recognize him. Dr. Winfrey. <laughs> Dr. Winfrey is being honored for career-spanning structural integrity contributions to NASA and other federal and industry space launch and aviation systems. Our final honoree in this category is Dr. Lawrence Young. Larry Young is a physicist and technologist who's worked at JPL for more than 30 years and he's most well known for pioneering a new type of GPS flight receiver that produce measurements that are much more accurate than anything anyone had ever envisioned or been able to do before. These are GPS receivers that uh, we put on board satellites. From space, these satellites can be used to measure change in the ocean height. As the ocean warms due to climate change, the ocean height rises, and we can detect this with very high accuracy now, less than a centimeter error in this height determination. These are among the most important measurements that NASA has contributed to society and to the international community over the past decades. Dr. Young, who could not be with us today, is being honored for extraordinary and paradigm-changing contributions to new GPS technologies with transformational impacts on NASA-led advancements in Earth science. So our second and final presentation is the Distinguished Public Service Medal. This is NASA's highest form of recognition that is awarded to any non-government individual or to an individual who was not a government employee during the period in which the service was performed, whose distinguished service ability or vision has personally contributed to NASA's advancement of United States interests. The individual's achievement or contribution must demonstrate a level of excellence that has made a profound or indelible impact to NASA's mission success Therefore, the contribution is so extraordinary that other forms of recognition by NASA would be inadequate. Today, we have four honorees in this category. The first honoree is Dr. Peter Kavanaugh. I think the number one reason that uh, Dr. Peter Kavanaugh is deserving of NASA's Distinguished Public Service Award is his persistence. Dr. Kavanaugh's uh, experiment on Expedition 6 was an experiment called Foot, and we had to wear these black stretchy pants uh, up on orbit for a whole day. Um, well, that may not seem like a big deal, but um, they would squeeze the fluids in your leg up to your head and create this kind of stuffy feeling. It was really uncomfortable, uh, and I hated wearing those stretchy pants. But still, no matter how much I, I disliked doing the actual uh, experiment, um, I still wanted to do it. Uh, and that's because Peter made me understand how important the data we were collecting was and what an impact it would have on future exploration. So uh, even though I was pretty grumpy on the days when I had to wear the foot suit, uh, I was really happy to collect the data and I was really happy to have the chance to work with Peter and his team. Dr. Kavanaugh. Dr. Kavanaugh is being honored for 30 years of service to NASA in the development and testing of spaceflight exercise countermeasures. Congratulations. Next, we honor Mr. Brian DiProfio. So in 2011, the city of Hampton, Virginia gave one of its employees a really difficult and special assignment. 
And that assignment was to turn around the Virginia Air and Space Center. The Virginia Air and Space Center was in some pretty, pretty bad financial shape. They were $3 million in the red. They had declining membership and visitor numbers. And uh, the city really wanted to bring it back to its former self. So in less than three years, Brian did just that. Um, without any experience in running a nonprofit, he was able to bring the visitor center out of the red. He was able to increase their membership and visitor numbers and made a variety of different uh, improvements to the Air and Space Center, returning it back to the region's premier education and outreach center for air and space. He did a great job. Because of Brian's dedication and his passion and commitment to this project, he is well deserving of the agency's highest public recognition. And um, this NASA Distinguished Public Service Medal is, uh, is something that he absolutely earned. Mr. DiProfio. Mr. DiProfio is being honored for exceptional leadership of NASA Langley Research Center's official visitor center, improving awareness of NASA's value and inspiring thousands of visitors and children. Thank you. Our next honoree is Mr. Davey Haynes. Davey is an exceptional launch vehicle engineer and he brings a passion for excellence in everything he does. He is willing to take on the tough technical challenges that stretch both himself and his team. His leadership skills have been exercised on numerous occasions during the development of the core stage of the Space Launch Systems vehicle. Davy has an uncanny ability to be able to solve the tough technical problems, deal with multiple organizations and multiple disciplines and find ways to come up with solutions that are innovative and are timely. But Davy is much more than a technical expert. He brings a passion to his work. He brings an ability to solve the issues. And for this, he is widely recognized and admired for his peers. Davy is all this, and he is one of the reasons that we will certify and fly the Space Launch System vehicle. Mr. Haynes. Mr. Haynes is being honored for distinguished service to NASA in the development of integrated environments for the development of the next generation of launch vehicles. Congratulations. Our final honoree is Mr. Roger McNamara. Roger was the director of Exploration Flight Test 1, which was the first orbital test of NASA's new Exploration spacecraft. Roger was responsible for development, production, and flight of this new vehicle. Roger had to manage a supplier base of hundreds of different companies from across the country who provided critical parts to make the spacecraft work. He oversaw assembly of the vehicle in the ONC building at the Kennedy Space Center and he worked to integrate Orion with the Delta IV launch vehicle at the United Launch Alliance. Uh, the flight itself was incredibly spectacular. Uh, the performance of the spacecraft was superb, and information we gleaned from the flight test is now being used to help us design a better spacecraft for Exploration Mission 1, which will fly beyond Earth orbit in 2018. In addition to that, and perhaps most important, the flight really reignited uh, the passions that people from across the country have for human and space exploration. Mr. McNamara. <laughs> Mr. McNamara is being honored for extraordinary leadership of the historic NASA Orion Exploration Flight Test 1 successful mission enabling human deep space exploration. Thank you. Congratulations. 
On behalf of the administrator, we thank each of the extraordinary honorees for their distinguished service, for participating in today's event, and we wish you much continued success in all of your future endeavors. We would also like to extend our special appreciation to Mr. Bolden, Mr. Lightfoot, Mr. Cabana, the Patrick Air Force Base Honor Guard, Amber Allen, Deontay Cooper, and Christopher Jackson, the ceremony volunteers, and our host, Kennedy Space Center, for all of your contributions in making today's ceremony a success. Before we conclude, may I ask that all of the honorees please return to the stage. We're gonna get a picture with everybody together. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Let's give all of our distinguished honorees another round of applause for their outstanding and valuable contributions to NASA.